Hello, welcome or welcome back to Life on the Fringe. Today we have a guest. Introduce yourself, guest. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Andrena. Um, I'm one of Francesca's friends from college. I would actually believe that we were almost each other's like first friend in orientation. So that's always super fun to know that we're still keeping in touch. Yeah, it's been a good six years. <laughs> going strong it has been six years yeah oh my gosh <laughs> okay <Yeah. laughs> not aware that it was that much time that's amazing I know I feel old but it has been six years <laughs> um okay so uh Andrea is here because we are celebrating pride by doing these interviews so how do you identify <laughs> I identify as a very proud and out bisexual and have done so for the past hmm, openly since like 2017, but have known since like maybe 2015. So uh, where do you live and where have you lived? And are there places that make you feel more or less safe than others given your you know, status as a bisexual person? Sure, so right now I'm living in Brooklyn in New York. Um, and it's it's lovely here. Obviously, New York is like very accepting of the queer community. So it, it's been lovely, especially being here during Pride Month for the first time in my life. Um, just seeing like all the flags and like all the, you know, just the celebrations. Um, it's, it's just it's been really lovely. And I'm very excited to go to a socially distant Pride March with my mask on, um, which is great. I got a little mask with the buy flag here. So it's fantastic. Um, or if I lived in the past for college, we went to, to Penn in Philly. Um, and that was also very, very accepting. It was great. Um, I went to Pride there a few years ago, actually, and it was lovely. I think Penn had actually, like, the year after I came out or so, maybe the year before I came out, um, it was, like, named, like, the most LGBT-friendly campus, like, in the country, which was fantastic news for someone who was studying there and who did identify does identify as an LGBT person um so that was great let's see before that I've I've moved around quite a bit so I've lived in Venezuela in Mexico in the United States obviously um but in Texas and Louisiana specifically and in China and Brazil of those places so in a lot of them I wasn't out or like I didn't even know that I wasn't straight mm -hmm. but Looking back on the experience now, I think when I lived in Brazil, we lived in Rio, which was like one of the more accepting places, I think. I mean, now under the current government, um, maybe not so much, but I do know that it wasn't like a big issue, except in my school, it was a rather small school. And so like, you know, gossip spread around a lot. And I did hear instances of biphobia against someone who had come out. And so that kind of like when I started to get an inkling that I wasn't straight, that kind of like pushed me a little bit more back into the closet than if I hadn't heard of that. So that was, that was a little bit uh, frustrating, especially as someone who was just coming to terms with her identity. And then I can't speak so much to the other places, but very unfortunately, um, my home country, Venezuela, is pretty notoriously uh, homophobic, which is very, very sad. It has to do, you know, with like the machista culture, um, but also like the this, like really staunch, like conservative kind of religiosity that is there. So that's been, that's been disappointing. Um, and a big part of why I haven't like super, super come out to my family, to my extended family yet. But yeah, so that's, that's I think like, the one place where I, it wouldn't do to be super out for me as of right now, mm -hmm. um, very unfortunately. And then I spent quarantine in Texas with my family and it just, it wasn't something that came up a lot. I mean, also, you know, we were all socially distant, so there wasn't a lot of, um, of talk about like sexual identity or anything, but at the same time, it wasn't a place where I would have felt super comfortable talking about it anyway especially with people I don't know that I didn't know where they landed in terms of their their acceptance spectrum I guess yeah I think that makes sense and so given that you're not like I mean you're out but you're not necessarily out 
loudly to all of your extended family? Are you nervous about this going up on the internet? Um, how are you feeling about that? <coughs> you can cut the call. <laughs> this you, you is it. Although now I might just leave it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, let's see. So honestly, most of my family, like mainly only speaks Spanish. So I'm not like super worried that, you know, someone's going to find this, take the time to translate it and then be like, oh, hey, but if they do, that's on them. Um, and it's not, it's not something that I don't want them finding out. Like I've, you know, I've really debated like just like posting it on Facebook. I think I've made one too many allusions to it on Instagram for it to be like plausible deniability anymore. Um, I wouldn't mind if if they found out I really wouldn't, it would make my life a lot easier actually, because then I wouldn't have to think about whether I should officially come out to them, mm -hmm. um, which obviously is a very personal decision. And some people choose to just never like explicitly come out. And that is totally um, respectable. I am a Leo and I want the attention. <laughs> um, I, want, I want it to be like explicitly known just because a lot of the posts that I make are like a little bit too supportive for an ally, I guess, um, mm -hmm. which there should be no such thing. But um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not really nervous about them finding out. Uh, their reactions, I think, would mainly just be messaging me or my mom or my dad and being like, is this, is this true? And then how my parents deal with it is their own, right? How I would deal with it would just be, yeah, I mean, if you saw it on the internet, it must be true. <laughs> um you know. never been so, so <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> maybe i should make one of those like whatsapp infographics you know <laughs> that's just like and doing this bisexual and like circulate on the internet and like see where it lands mm -hmm. but no um no nervousness it would make my life easier i'm just i haven't just i just haven't gotten around to doing it myself fair enough fair enough um, so speaking of coming out of the closet, um, you kind of mentioned like coming to terms with your identity yourself. So like coming out kind of to yourself and then a separate instance of like coming out more broadly. Can you speak a little bit more to that? Yeah, absolutely. So it's actually, it's a very funny little timeline. Um, in 2014. Okay. So let's see throughout like high, like middle school and high school, I think I, I made one too many comments that were like, oh my gosh, if I was a guy, I would totally date this girl, you know? Um, and I made it to my friends and they just kind of rolled with it and they would like reply in kind. So I'm like, I, I wonder how they're identifying now, you know? Mm -hmm. But um, so that was, that was super entertaining to like look back on now as someone who knows that she's not straight and being like the, there were flags all along you know there was just pride flags popping up everywhere mm -hmm. but um so that was that was like up like through high school and then in high school I started a tumblr and I had like a tag that was like oh my celebrity crushes you know and it was like like, it was like Andrew Garfield like Tom Holland you know like all those big guy names and then I started actually adding like women specifically I remember I think the first one I ever added was like Natalie Dormer um after I saw her in the Hunger Games and I was like oh okay crush cool and then that like like the women's list started getting like suspiciously long and like even longer than like the men's list and I was like that's not that's not quite right so I I remember my friend Sophia she had moved away at this point she was in Argentina and we happened to be in Argentina for like a weekend um and I met up with her and I told her, I was like, hey, so I think I might not be straight. And she was like, I mean, yeah. <laughs> so that was the, that was very jarring. And I was like, well, I would have appreciated the heads up, I guess. Um, right. You could have let so me know. <laughs> the, exactly. So then after that, I was like, oh, OK, we're cool with it. Cool. And then and then I forgot about it. I, I, I completely forgot about that. Like, I was aware we had that conversation, mm -hmm. but I like out of sight out of mind I literally just completely forgot that that interaction had happened and that I had like said that out loud to someone mm -hmm. and then freshman year of college with you actually I was making like my very first tinder profile 
um, which is embarrassing to say. And I think that's more what I'm ashamed of getting out on the internet than like anything else. Um, and I had put, I remember I put my studies to like men and women. And then <laughs> in, in a moment where I misread everything, um, uh, Francesca us, goes, oh, this is like the most, <laughs> I am so like <laughs> funny looking back on it, stupid yeah. fucking conversation we've ever had. <laughs> I'm sure like because I was nervous that I wasn't giving off the right vibes and then you were nervous so you weren't picking up the vibe yeah so Francesca in a show of like solidarity um goes like oh men and women and I immediately become flustered because at this point I hadn't told anyone Mm -hmm. and I I was like an international super spy you know Mm -hmm. um it's, it's it's a TikTok thing that was an embarrassing reference to make but um, I was like, I was like, oh, oh my God. Like I became super flustered and was like, I, I think I've clicked up by mistake. Like, absolutely not, you know? And I like deselected women. And I was just like, huh, that was like five steps backward, no steps forward. So that was great. Mm-hmm. Um, and then and it, it wasn't uh, until. Well, the, so, so to go off that, then meanwhile, I was like, oh, yeah. I was like, oh shit. Like, I, okay. It's just me. <laughs> like never mind and then and then I think it was like it was a quite some time before we came out to each other because of that interaction yep yeah (laughs) no that was that was a very funny timeline and then it turned out that in that room we were four people and not one of us is straight and so I was like that could have saved so much time if we had just been you know like yeah I meant to click that and like okay I support it because me too you know mm-hmm. so that was that was very very funny to me at least like, looking back on it now oh yeah um, it, was, it was hilarious yeah so so then after that little like mishap um what was it that even that even prompted me I think my friend came to visit my friend Whit came to visit at Penn and we were all just hanging around by like a pond and it just so happened that everyone hanging out there was like a bisexual woman and aside from me everyone was into theater and so they just all mentioned like oh we're all into theater and then like it came out that like oh I'm not straight are you straight no I'm not straight and so then we all just collectively came out to each other and I was like oh cool perfect So that was like the label that has stuck since was like bisexuality, which I still stand by it. Um, I have like my little, my, my pride flag ready for, for the March. I'm super excited. And like I mentioned the mask and a ring and it's, it's a whole thing. Also the colors are just very aesthetic. They are. Um, We, we we did look out on the flag. Um, You know, there's so many like sunset, like backgrounds. Like I know people who aren't out yet but they'll change their like uh, desktop screensaver to the bright or to the bi flag colors. Right. And it's like, yeah, it happens in nature. Like it's just a sunset. And then everyone who is bi looks and is like, I see you. I see. Yeah, you. exactly. <laughs> um, okay. So what are um, some of the stereotypes that you've encountered in your life and how did you respond to those yeah so um I think one of them one big one actually is that this is like a placeholder label and that I just haven't like decided on whether I'm like straight or a lesbian um and I was actually talking about this yesterday with some friends like people they'll they'll make that assumption with like the kindest of intentions like you know they'll just be like oh is this like a step in your process and it's like well you're not it's a it's a step on my process but it's like the last step like that this is acceptance you know mm-hmm. um and i think the, the way i've tried to explain it is just kind of like look like right now i'm dating like x gender and that so like i'm still a bisexual who just happens to be dating x gender but maybe next year I'll be dating, what? I accidentally did chromosome, sorry, A gender and then B gender. Mm-hmm. Um, then later on, maybe C gender, you know, like, so it, it's kind of like no 
doors have been closed just because I picked one partner of a certain gender to be with. Like it's still, it's still very much a label. It's just like within that label, it's like, okay, you know, I'm this and I'm dating this. This doesn't mean that I'm no longer this. Right. Um, but it's, it's mostly just education because it is a common, super common misconception. And like another one is that we're totally down for like a third or we're totally down for a threesome. And I just remember <laughs> in college, one, uh, one boyfriend that I was dating, he was like, oh, for April Fool's, I almost brought in like my female friend and asked if we could have a threesome. And I very straight in the face was like, mm, that would have instantly been a red flag and grounds for breakup. Like, honestly, the fact that you even considered that to be a good prank to pull on April 1st, kind of giving me some like bright orange flags that I didn't act on, but, mm-hmm. but oh well. Um, so that was, that was very frustrating. Cause it's kind of like, well, that's not, I mean, you know, this isn't like, oh, a prop. This isn't like spicy, like heterosexuality where I'm just like down to do anything. Mm-hmm. Um, there are people that are, and that's super, super cool. And that's awesome. But like the fact that that is the immediate assumption of people is very frustrating. Yeah. And I think I was watching a, a another YouTube video, um, kind of about, this idea of like bisexual people are like down for anything or like it's like a kink um it was by a bi person you know dispelling this kind of myth but um she hypothesized that it's the notion that because like and this isn't true either but there's this other like myth which we'll get to in a second that um to be bi right you have slept with at least two people right like a a guy and a girl usually that's the assumption that people forget about other genders that exist but usually that's the assumption and there's this like and like most people like straight or not probably have like at this in this day and age slept with more than one person regardless of like their gender um but there's this inherent like promiscuity associated I think to bisexuality because it's quote-unquote impossible for you to have only slept with one person which it isn't like you can only ever be with one gender and still be a bisexual person but like I and I think she's on to something because like you don't see that level of like assumption of promiscuity with like like other like queer identities that you do with like bisexuality or pansexuality because it's like implied that we're just sleeping with everyone because we're open to everyone so therefore we must be sleeping with mm-hmm. everyone <laughs> right exactly no it's it's very unfortunate and i actually remember um I don't know if you remember Pastor Carl, who used to stand outside of Van Pelt and just spew really bigoted, like, hateful rhetoric. And I was standing there with another friend who also identifies as bisexual. And we went up to him and like, just kind of jokingly were like, oh, so because he one of his things was like, oh, like gay people are going to hell. What are you going to do? And so we go up to him and we're like, oh, so we're, you know, playing off of the whole like the stereotype of like, like bisexual people are like half gay half straight which is not true we're just entirely bisexual Mm -hmm. um we went up to him and we're like okay so if if we're both bisexual does that make us like one gay like does does like only like half of us go to hell and if so like is it just like one of us or like do both halves you know like Mm -hmm. go to hell and then he instantly goes no that just makes you both whores and so that was that was super great to hear um, during my coffee break at school. Mm-hmm. Um, very, from a pastor, I love it. From a pastor, yeah. No, it was fantastic. I That's quite really appreciate spreading that. Jesus's love is just going around calling people whores. Yeah. Let's forget yeah. Mary Magdalene. You know, let's just forget about her. <laughs> exactly, because as we know, you know, like Jesus totally didn't associate with anyone who could fall under the like 
ridiculous, ridiculous. It's like they haven't even read the Bible, but that's a whole other conversation. Yeah, that's that's a separate interview, a separate topic. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we touched on a few myths there. Are there any others that you wanted to mention um, that you've heard that you either like think are, are true, like they're like myths from the bi community or like right. myths that are not true? <laughs> Yeah, so I think I think one of the things that cracks me up is um, the stereotype, or like the myth, the stereotype that we all cuff our jeans. Because I do cuff my skinny jeans, and it's very, very funny to me <laughs> um, <laughs> just to see that as like a thing. Because I'm like, damn it, like I, I told, I do that, I do that. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think what else. Some of them are just super harmless, like the fact that we all at some point in time were obsessed with the color purple, and I'm like, that's that's not wrong it, for the longest time it was my favorite color and now it's pink so I'm still within the flag you know mm -hmm. um let's see oh one that actually does hurt a little bit well a little bit quite a lot mm -hmm. is um so obviously there's a lot of um intersection between the bisexual identity and pansexuality they are very similar I think I read somewhere that like the main difference is how we experience attraction to different genders I, I don't remember exactly what the distinction was. I think it's kind of like, and I may be completely wrong and I apologize, but for bisexuality, it's like, we're still conscious of the fact that like the other person has like a certain gender, whereas like pansexuality, according to what I read, just sort of experiences all that attraction in the same way. And that's the main distinction. But I've read a lot of comments on like on TikToks, on Instagram, on Twitter, on, on Facebook, everywhere, where like people who are new to the community, you know, make the distinction in that like, oh, bisexuals are attracted to men and women and pansexuals are attracted to men, women, non-binary folk and trans folks. And to me, like that is, it's not only very uh, biphobic, it's also like extremely transphobic as well to just put trans people in a separate category like when you say that you are attracted to even if you said that you are strictly attracted to men and to women that does necessarily imply trans men and trans women mm -hmm. um and so like hearing those kinds of takes is is very hurtful because I know that like speaking for myself and for the bi people that I do know it, it's not the case even again sticking to the gender binary and saying oh I'm only attracted to like men and to women like to say that that excludes trans trans folks paints us in a very bad light and is also very harmful to the trans community because it greatly invalidates their gender mm -hmm. um but aside from that also saying that bisexuality excludes um like agender people gender fluid people demigender um like non-binary folks like that's also very harmful I I, I think the actual like like proper definition of bisexuality is just being attracted to like your own gender and at least one other gender, if I'm not mistaken. And so, or like or two or more genders. Um, I think that's also the other common uh, common definition for it. And like those are true. Like it it doesn't necessarily exclude anyone. You know I. I think the main reason why I identify as like bisexual and not pansexual is one, because I learned the label bisexual first, but then two, based on how I experience attraction to people from different genders. Um, it's just been the case for me that I am like, I'm still attracted to them and I still have like the like similar romantic feelings to them, but I am still conscious of the gender that they are or the gender that they're not. Um, whereas again, based on what I've heard and based on what I've like spoken about with my friends who identify as pansexual, um, that attraction is sort of different among the two sexualities. Mm -hmm. But that is, that is definitely a myth that like, if I could, you know, like have a sponsored tweet on Twitter, um, that everyone had to see that it was like blasted in the morning for everyone to see, it would be like, like, please stop this misconception. Cause it is, it is very harmful to multiple communities right and like you were saying it's it's harmful to the trans community because like if you're bisexual and you're attracted to men and women that includes trans men and trans women um I not to not to cut in on your interview um 
but one that's related to me is like you are transphobic if you are bisexual and not attracted to um like non-binary or agender or gender fluid people i definitely feel that um i i I think the main issue there is that again like it's the, the whole thing is like two or more genders and like as long as you're not again invalidating like right. trans people's genders who do fall on the binary mm-hmm. um you know and saying like oh I'm attracted to like women but I'm like only attracted to cis women like that is like just blatant transphobia right um but yeah no that is that is frustrating when when that sort of like a super arbitrary distinction is made because again you know like for many people for whom that's the case like that's why they identify as bisexual and not pansexual you know like that's that's also like one of the distinctions like for me there's less of a distinction because I am also attracted to non-binary people and like people who don't fall on the spectrum but there are bi people who are just very comfortable you know sticking to the binary and that's their prerogative, but that's also why they chose the label. Mm-hmm. So to like say that that's necessarily bad, right? Right. I yeah. It's 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 a very frustrating and like complex topic as well. Yeah, and I do think it's a good point. Like just because you're like bi or any identity on the LGBTQ plus spectrum, you can still be transphobic. It's just like you could fall like in that category and still be biphobic or still be homophobic or whatever. Like just because you're part of like the pride flag does not mean you don't have problematic views. So I agree with you that you could definitely be bi and be transphobic. Um, It's just this assumption that I think we both agree is frustrating. Um, Mm -hmm. So and we're not we're not for clarification, we're not saying that, oh you can be bi and transphobic. It's like you absolutely should not be not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you make <laughs> all of us look bad and also you're just a trash person. But like we are not exempt from that kind of like problematic rhetoric. Like that is still something that like we as a community and we as individuals desperately need to keep working on. Um but we're not just immediately innocent just because we happen to also be on like on the LGBT flag, you know? Yes. Thanks for putting that more eloquently than I put it. <laughs> that, that's what I, yes, I second that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, before we wrap this up, is there anything else that you would like to talk about relating to your sexuality before we end this conversation for now well I think I think one of the main things is that while it is true that one of the more negative I think stereotypes and like more harmful stereotypes for um, bisexual people is that we are still deciding between labels and that that's why we're using this placeholder label it is also true that if your journey so happens to be that you initially because of compulsory heterosexuality what have you internalized lesbophobia um you know started off as like oh identifying as straight and then identifying as bisexual and then finding out that you actually are not attracted to men or if you're a man that you're actually not attracted to women and you're actually gay that is still completely valid like the existence of that stereotype should not in any way impact what you hold true to yourself. Um, I know I'm certainly not the only person who has ever questioned her label. Um, There have been many moments in which I've, you know, wondered, like, is my attraction to men actually real? Or is it just because of compat, you know, which is compulsory heterosexuality? Um, Or, like, is it still valid if it's only like celebrities right now, but then like, I date one guy, and it's like, oh, okay, like, clearly, you don't, you don't need to really like make those explanations like to yourself or to other people. They do help if you like are figuring out what label or if you want to go by a specific label, but like changing your labels when you initially identified as like bisexual or even pansexual 
it, it doesn't hurt the community the way that stereotypes do. Like the stereotypes are like imposed externally and they're harmful and they're like used to invalidate the identity. But if what is going through your mind and like through your heart just so happens to in some way, shape or form kind of like appear similar to what the stereotypes say, that is not on you and you are not to be faulted for that or made to be feel guilty. Like sexuality is so beyond fluid. It's not even funny. Um, and you can identify as different um, labels throughout your entire life of you if, if that's how you feel. And not once will you as an individual be responsible for in any way ident- um, um, in- invalidating any of the identities that you have gone through. Like, I think that, that is like probably the biggest thing that I would love to share to anyone who might be like, actually questioning their label and not like stereo like falling into the whole like oh like you're only bisexual because you're questioning you know I think that is another way in which that stereotype harms like not only the people who are like secure in their bisexuality but also people who might be branching away from it yeah that's a very good point it's just like it can be a stepping stone and it can also like conversely um be a stepping stone back. There are, um, you know, are people who identify as like lesbian, but then decide, well, actually I think I'm bisexual. You know, trying to define your sexuality when it's something that's so abstract is really difficult. Um, And I am glad we have labels just for the ease of being able to like find a community that has similar experiences to you but I do think it can be like the negative consequence is that as humans, we then want to put strict boxes around those labels. And that's where we get into trouble because nothing about sexuality fits in a box. Mm-hmm. So, but thank you so much for being interviewed today. Um, and thank you all for listening. Uh, If you want to hear more of our content, you can click the subscribe button and ding the bell to know when we post, which is every day, not always about um, bisexuality, but this month, because it's Pride, I am going to be interviewing a bunch of people. Uh, So this is the first of many. Uh, So thank you for being my first guest. Um, And if you like this uh, video, give it a thumbs up. Otherwise, um, I will see you uh, in another video. Bye. Wait, I actually have a pride flag. I can pull it out super, super quickly. All right, you do that. I'll put on my pride hat. I wore this shirt. Yes. It has a rainbow on my boobs. <laughs> so I have to keep- I love that. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. Oh man, I should have worn my, my um, rainbow flower crown during the interview. I didn't even think of it. We'll put it in the thumbnail. You can have your crown and I'll have my hat. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay, let me go get my, my crown then. I'll be right back. All right. It's my little flag. Perfect. Okay, ready for this thumbnail.